22 sheets of copier paper, 24 sheets of photo paper, 58 A4 sticky labels, 29 sheets of card, 2 glue sticks, 65 grams of PVA 7 glue, 7 scalpel blades, 4 snap offs of a crack. Welcome to Chandwell. My name is Michael, and after 169 hours over 138 days, and at a cost of £26.30 plus the printer ink, the Lower Relief Hotel for behind Chandwell Station is complete. I have a very special video planned for next week. But for this final part, Part 16. Let's take a look at how I finished off the hotel and embedded it into its landscape. I planned a rectangular base to the tower and I made this in the usual way by making a kit of parts glued to card. I made right angled corners to represent square columns up the outer corners of the building. When making these, it's important to cut one side narrower than the other by the same thickness of the card so that they go together with a square profile. Once wrapped in texture, and placed on the wall, they look just like columns and there are no obvious card joins. I clamped them to my right angle jig while the glue set. Once I saw the completed part in place, I felt that because of the low relief profile of the building, the new bit made the tower seem unbalanced. The whole look of the hotel seemed wrong and I wasn't at all happy. I began to wish I'd put windows in the ground floor of the tower and been done with it. In the end, I tore it apart and with the front piece undamaged, I tried some alternative arrangements. It looked like this 45 degree arrangement would suit the overall building. So I drew and cut some new side walls and checked that it was all square. With the textures and glazing applied, this slotted against the tower really nicely and I was much happier. It was a simple case of adding a piece of card to the roof, covered in tarmac texture and with a stone coarse edge. We'll come back to the finishing touches later, but let's take a look at getting the ground in place. The hotel sits atop a retaining wall which descends gradually from the right of the layout to the left. I needed some new graffiti for this wall and since Scotty and Stanley had already visited it, I decided to subcontract this job. I asked my nieces Daisy and Poppy to come up with some designs which they were really happy to do. I used Inkscape to bring their designs to reality and ended up with a pink and gold daisy breaking through a wall and a purple and gold queen pops to go alongside. I used my usual techniques of using overlay and soft light merge modes with reduced opacity and a final blurring of the edges to get these on top of the stone texture. Once printed, I had the walls on two layers of half millimetre card. The base layer was straightforward, but the arch layer which goes on top is always a little bit more of a challenge. I made sure that the texture was clipped to the arch shape in exactly the same position as it is clipped to the base layer rectangle. So when I then wrap the texture around the arched card, it goes into the exact position to make it look like Daisy has scrawled her name right across the double section of wall. I think the new graffiti has come out really well, so thank you Daisy and Poppy, and I know that you will remember not to do this in real life. Adding the top of the wall was a bit of a challenge, as I had such an irregular shape to contend with. Because the ground is descending from right to left, I didn't have the luxury of being able to put the ground in place first and then build the hotel on top of it. I laid random offcuts of paper on top of each other, held in place by blobs of PVA glue, and made sure that they touched the walls everywhere. Once the glue had set, I peeled this off. I glued it upside down onto some 1mm card, so that when I turned it up the right way, the smooth surface was uppermost. It wasn't until I was sliding this ground into place from the bottom up, that I realised that I could probably have just drawn around the base of the building and been just as successful. Every day is a school day. Once in place, the ground made such a difference. The wall descends 4mm in 125mm, so the slope is subtle. But it is noticeable, and since no ground is flat in Chandwell, I think it adds a little bit of interest. I covered the ground in tarmac edged with stone. And with it in place on the building, I glued the retaining wall underneath it and left the glue to go off. When I put the hotel back on the layout, I realised that the ground and the base of the tower were being fouled by the network socket. In turn, this was pushing the hotel too close to the tracks, which themselves not quite perfectly straight. It was an easy job with the scalpel to carve a socket shaped hole in the back wall. Not bad for a bit of guesswork. I finished the whole thing off with a sign made in Inkscape, and a little curve of wall with a half dead bush in it. It's amazing to look back at the serial packet mock-up I made and just how close to the real thing it ended up being. I love how the hotel has turned out and I think my favourite part is the mirror inside the ballroom and the dirty whitewashed workers yard. 
did I mention? I've got a very special episode next week. It's going to be a celebration of the completion of the Royal Scot, whilst I find something else to fill the hotel-shaped hole in my life. Before that episode, why not revisit the film that local Chandwell celebrity Brittany Scroggins made for the Visit Chandwell Tourist Board in 1993. Please join me next week for my special episode, and then the week after for a look at what may be next. So until then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.